Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to tonight's P and P. Throughout the life of Jesus, we see that he is a man of prayer. Usually, he would go to a secluded area like a mountain, alone to pray early in the morning, and then only after that he began ministering to the people. And sometimes he would also bring his disciples along to pray with him. In Luke chapter nine,、uh, this is such a time when he brought Peter, James, and John with him up to a mountain to pray. Here, the disciples were treated to a moment beyond their wildest dreams. So let's read in Luke chapter nine, verse twenty-eight to thirty-six, and see what the disciples saw. In verse twenty-eight, about eight days after Jesus said this, he took. Peter, James, and John, with him, and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring. To fulfilment at Jerusalem, Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, "Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters: one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah." He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, "This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him." When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. This is. A miraculous moment. Jesus brought his closest disciples, Peter, John, and James, to the mountain to pray. And while Jesus was praying, they began to sleep. Then Jesus was transfigured; his face and clothes changed to something different. All of Jesus was transformed to something supernatural. On top of that, the two most prominent prophets of Israel. Moses and Elijah were talking with Jesus. What is so significant about the transfiguration of Jesus? Number one, in the transfiguration of Jesus, his glory was unveiled. For a moment, the human figure of Jesus was totally transformed. His divine figure was unmasked. All of his glory and majesty was revealed in its fullest sense. He is not just any human; he is the divine Son of God who shares in the glory and in the majesty of God the Father. And thus, the voice came out of the cloud, affirmed this. It says, "This is my Son, my chosen one. Listen to him." Secondly, Jesus was in the company of Moses and Elijah. Or, more accurately, Moses and Elijah were in the company of Jesus. You see, Moses and Elijah, they were the two most prominent prophets in their right. Through them, God did wonders and miracles for Israel in her crossroads. Israel's guiding light was the law of Moses and the prophets. Thus. With these two phenomenal figures accompanying Jesus, the credibility of Jesus was verified in his mission of Israel and for the world. Moses, the representative of the law, and Elijah, the representative of the prophets, talking with Jesus about what Jesus would be fulfilling in Jerusalem, meaning. That he would be fulfilling the Father's plan of redemption. And third, as they were leaving Jesus, God's glory filled 
the place where Jesus and the three disciples were. The cloud appeared and covered them all. Now you remember Israel's miraculous rescue from Egypt? When they reached Mount Sinai, God came and made his presence among them by a cloud. It's what the Hebrew would call the Shekinah glory. And Shekinah can actually mean he caused to dwell. So God manifests himself visibly to the people through nature. Thus, the presence of the cloud reflects the Exodus story. But the difference is, God's fully visible presence is Jesus himself. If you like, Jesus is the Shekinah glory of God who dwelt among us. As the disciple John, the Apostle John, says in his Gospel, in chapter 1 verse 14, he says, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory glory as of the only son from the father full of grace and truth then skip uh, to verse 18 no one has ever seen god the only god who is at the father's side he has made him known therefore in this transfiguration we see that jesus is god sharing the same glory as God the Father. Number two, Jesus fulfills the role of Moses and Elijah. And number three, that Jesus is the glory of God himself dwelling among us, dwelling with his people. When the disciples saw the glory of Jesus, they were awestruck. Chills ran down their spine. They were awakened. From their sleepiness. Fear came over them and they heard the voice of God saying, Listen to Jesus, my chosen one. Brothers and sisters, are we sleepy as we come to prayer? As we come to PNP, even tonight? No, not necessary to say physically tired and sleepy, but have we grown tired and sleepy spiritually? in our hearts, in our souls, in our motivation to seek God and to pray. Like Peter, we may have confessed Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God. But as we journey on in our Christian life, we seem to lose that joy. We lose our fire and the desire to pray and to pray with great expectation. Now tonight, Let's behold the glory of God. Let's behold the glory of Jesus. And let's be rejuvenated and refreshed and strengthened in our spiritual walk. Just like the disciples, as they return from their sleepiness to awe and wonder, as they behold the glory of Jesus. Come and behold the glory of our Lord through worship and it's only with the heart of worship that we can see his glory